Hello again, this is Ken Turner from Milford, Ohio. Now, we're going to continue with Ephesians in chapter 2, verse 21, 22. If you're enjoying these messages, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and make some comments on what God's doing in your life. We're going to talk about a dwelling place for the Spirit of God. This is so powerful. And I, I'm going to just mention a couple of the thoughts here in this scripture. Here. It says, a holy temple in the Lord, in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. In other words, God is trying to disciple us. He's trying to bring us into a place that we can realize that we are a dwelling place for God by His Spirit. By His Spirit, He creates a dwelling place for Him in us. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But see, a lot of us as, as Christians, we're so shallow in our walk with God. And I'm trying not, I'm not trying to be defensive, but we've all walked in, in the shallowness of God where we enjoy Christian music. We enjoy going to church on Sunday, but that's about all that it is. It's no more than just this, this good feeling of I belong to the kingdom of God kind of thing. But we need to realize that he is building us together in verse 22 here of Ephesians chapter 2. He says, he and him also are being built together. He's building the body of Christ together. A holy temple of the Lord, a dwelling place for God by his spirit. And then he goes down to verse 14 in chapter 3 of Ephesians. He said, to be strengthened with power, his spirit. Through his spirit is how we receive power from God. It's a strengthening of us through God's spirit dwelling in us, working in and through us. It says in your inner being, in other words, in soul, in, in the very depths of us, not, our, not, it's not a mind thing. It's not a mind. Now the mind is part, is connected to the soul. Don't get me wrong. The mind is connected to the soul, but the mind can deceive us. But if we allow the Spirit of God and allow God to truly dwell in us and we live in fellowship with him, that inner man, that inner being can be strengthened by the power of the Spirit of God. It says, so that Christ may dwell in your heart, in your soul. Christ desires to be not only in fellowship, but he desires to be in oneness and union with us, dwelling in our heart and our soul. And this is what Ephesians chapter two and chapter three is talking about here, a dwelling place for God by the spirit, a holy temple in the Lord. He is trying to build us together. And then it goes on down in verse 17 of chapter three there. It says rooted and grounded in love. There's so much division today, even in the church. One denomination doesn't like another denomination. Another denomination doesn't like another denomination. I know we don't all agree, but it says to be rooted and grounded in love. In other words, come together in love and love one another. Quit trying to point out one another's faults, but come together in a love and agreement. I can guarantee you God doesn't agree with everything that we do. God doesn't agree with everything that we believe, but God is trying to use his spirit to create in us this, this perfect unity that he desires that is rooted and grounded in love. Now look at verse 19 of chapter three of Ephesians says here, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. The love of Christ goes beyond knowledge, goes beyond understand, understanding. He loves the unlovable, the people that we think we can't love. God loves them and he is seeking them out to bring them into fellowship with us, with him, with us. If they come into the kingdom of God, they are now part of the kingdom of God. And we are now required to love and we are required to also be in fellowship with him. It says that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Wouldn't it be awesome to be in a place to be filled with the complete fullness of God? In other words, God just permeates, just, 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 completely permeates everything that we do and everything that we think and everything that we are. 
filled with all the fullness of God. Now look at verse 3 and 20 here in Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, than anything we can imagine, God is able to do more than that. God's been laying on my heart different things, and he is able. He is able to do those things that he has placed in our heart and our life to strengthen us, to make us more like him, and to follow through with the things that he's called us to do and the things he's called us to be. God cares more about your character than he does your comfort. Did you hear me? God cares more about your character than he has your comfort. God's not in the business just to make our life always easy. He's in the business to help shift us and mold us and grow us into this holy vessel that he dwells in, that he dwells in. It says, according to the power at work within. In other words, the power that God has placed in us, he can only work in and through us at the level that we allow him to. We tend to put God in a box and limit his abilities in our life. His abilities are far more than what we can fathom, what we can understand. God is faithful and he desires to dwell to dwell in our hearts, to work in our lives, to fulfill and make us the greatest me, you, that he can make us. But it's up to us to know the love of Christ and be filled with all the fullness of God. As God works in our life, continue to be obedient to him, continue to surrender your life to him and allow him to work in your life and the inner man and the inner being and allow him into those parts that no one else is allowed. God is faithful. God loves us. I love you and I'm praying for you. May God bless you.